We are going to pick up today, everyone, where we left off um, with this whole belief in baptism. We've been talking about faith. And so we're going to go deeper into faith. There are a lot of scriptures that tells us that we are to live by faith. But just as a quick review, what we have learned about faith is that having faith means having conviction or trust in God's word to act upon it. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! I was so focused on that, I forgot to bring the sign. So I'm going to buy a sign to keep it here, but that's why there's no happy birthday sign. <laughs> so, charge it to my head and not my heart. So happy birthday. So I didn't want you to think anything. Uh, Charlene said happy birthday, Rydasia. It's Rydasia's birthday, everybody. Okay. So, um... So, to have faith means having conviction or trust in God's word to act upon it, resulting in the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Because when I trust God and have conviction in what he said, I'm now going to put corresponding actions to what he said, and it's going to cause the things that I'm hoping for in God's word to form into substance, become manifested and the things that I can't see in God's word is going to be it's going to be evident. <clears throat> yes. It brings us down. Yes. So, all right, first, what is faith? So, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Okay. How do you execute faith? You execute faith by putting corresponding actions to the word of God in thought, word, and speech. And what does it mean to have faith? What it means to have faith is to have trust and conviction in God's word. Okay, I got it. Questions? <laughs> I'm asking questions. Hope. I passed the test. <laughs> what is hope? Hope is to have an expectation or imagining having yourself. Is to have yeah, expectation. That's time. Okay, to have expectation. Um, um, to have expectation and imagine seeing yourself having what God said. I mean, and then it could be other things. We can use hope for other things, but in relation to God, yeah, it's an expectation to have what he said we could have. So I don't have it, but I'm hoping for it. I see myself having it. I imagine myself having it. That's hope. Worry would be to see myself not having it and being fearful and scared that negative things are going to happen. So worry is just the opposite of hope. So hope is I expect and imagine myself having what he said. Can you say that first statement, faith is having conviction and trusting God, so much so to put corresponding actions to his word in order to receive the stuff, the, the things that you expect that you read about his word? Mm-hmm. Okay. I just want like, without yep. the, nope, yep. the down. Yep. That's good. That's correct. Um, Andrew. And you guys know, too, there's a microwave. I warmed mine up. It's better warm. thinking about that. Yeah. You need about 20 seconds on it. <laughs> but also, hope the same thing as well. I don't know if you said, uh, bringing stuff out of the spiritual realm, out of the spiritual realm. So is that the hope one too? Or that so that would be the manifestation part. Okay. Hope is I expect to have it. Because if I don't expect to have it, my faith has nothing to manifest. I got to give it something to focus on manifesting. Any other questions? Really good questions. Um, let me go to the chat. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that. Having faith means, because we also say, is it correct to say have faith? Yes, because Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty two, have faith in God. So when he said that, what he is saying is have conviction and trust in God's word. So much so that I'm going to act upon it. Because that's what the faith, that's how you exercise it. You act upon it. But I'm not going to act upon anything that I'm not convinced about or that I don't trust. It is my, my hesitation comes from not trusting God. So whenever we hesitate to do what we know God's word says, we have to instantly recognize I have a trust issue with God. And I need to work on that. So is that, so then that would be, so when the opposite of having faith is when Christ looked at the disciples and said, oh, ye a little faith. 
he was yeah. saying, you don't have the trust and conviction in me to put corresponding actions to my words. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And at that point, I don't, yeah, I'm just like, yes. Because I was going to say, I don't know if they realized that at that point that Christ was God the Father manifest. But if you trusted in God the way you said you do, you, you would have did it. Because even if you don't yet have that revelation, yeah, you know the word of God. And what's coming yeah. out of my mouth is, is the, the word, word of God. God. Yeah. yeah, And that's how when he was asleep on the boat, because he was like, well, I see we're going to the other side. That's yeah. why I'm asleep. So why y'all got so little faith? Then you don't trust the fact that we was going to make it to the other side? And that's why he was kind of like perturbed with them. Because he's like, we didn't, you, at this point, you didn't seen a lot of miracles happening. So what's the deal, guys? I need you to grow. I need you to mature. And that was his frustration with them. At certain points, you act like a son and then you go backward. And now you act like a child again, like you don't trust. So, yeah, really good. Any other thoughts? Because, yeah, we got to get this piece down on faith. Because I'm going to another section of faith. Yes. I was just, I don't know, have y'all ever seen Bruce Almighty? Yes. Yes. And I was just telling my Deja, I'm like, this movie is so fake because of course. You said so what? Fake. Fake. Like, fake. And, and the way it described faith, it was so going out of course. Okay. Like, because when he gave uh, Bruce his power, when God came to earth and gave him his power, he did not believe the power that he had, but it was working. So I was like, See, that's wrong, because if he didn't believe, it wouldn't be working. Exactly. So I'm like, by him just doing it, like, not just, not him just doing it, he, he was doing stuff by accident, and it was happening. I was like, no, nah, see, they think they got this all wrong. Of course. And I was like, dang, this is some ties with Zach Lewis, I'm like, uh, yep. this type of shit training. But the one thing I like about, and which I never forgot that, and I use it to this day, uh, and Bruce Almighty was, uh, I think it was talking about patience or whatever. I don't know. I use it for patience, but I forgot what they were asking for. I don't know if it was patience or something. But he was like, it doesn't just, you're not going to just get zapped with yeah. it. So, and I thought that was, so they have pieces in there yeah. that are really good and pieces that are just corrupt. But that's Satan. He mixes truth with lies and then it's just bad. So. I do imagine though, <laughs> if the Lord had an auditory voice that everyone can hear, yes. it would sound like yes. more Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Because it's just so soothing. Like, it's just. (laughs) Moses didn't say his voice was soothing. The children of Israel were like, we don't want to talk to him. Go ahead. (laughs) I I like Morgan Freeman as my audible. Because it talks about, too. And I don't know what this means, but in Revelation, it said his voice sounds like many waters. I don't it's know. It's like a waterfall. That. It's overwhelming, rushing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Because I was like, I don't get it. Yes. See, that's that poetic part of the descriptions. But you got to be like, let me go read some Shakespeare real quick. <laughs> oh, that's what he said. I'm also going to see the way that the Lord told them that they were going to go to the other side. And then they were supposed to take that word and like hold on to it. It's um, interesting because like a lot of times when we are trying to listen to the Lord and figure out what he's uh, saying, we like take it like he's like, do this like really like encouraging but that was a simple conversation piece and they're supposed to take that conversation piece of he was saying like we're going to the other side like, okay he said it so no matter what happened we're going to the other side right it wasn't like a, we're gonna make it to the other side Yo, this is gonna be great he was like no we're gonna go to the other side right that's a really good point because that that is normal life for us god just gives us a quick statement it's like god you know he's not a person that just runs off out the mouth and you're just like, all right, I got it. Stop talking. It's just a real quick thing. And either down, you trust what I just told you or you don't trust what I told you and you move about life. So when he says something, my challenge in my walk with him has been to, all right, just take it. He said it. So either I trust it or I don't. And if I trust it, I'm going to act on it. If I don't trust it, then I'm going to know because I'm not going to act on it. And it's just really that simple. And that's how he knows who truly has strong faith and who has weak faith. Because either you're acting on what I said in my word. And for me, again, there, there have been many things in my life where I've been able to now look back and be like, oh, I passed that. Not that it was a test from God, but I was able to see my character. Am I really living the life that I say that I portray to people that I'm living? And this plague was just another one. Because it's like, okay, Psalms 91 says, no plague shall come near me. Either I trust you, and I'm going to just walk in life as normal, because I should be able to, or I don't trust you, and I'm going to be in fear and in hiding and in this, and my whole life is going to be disrupted. And, and again, it helps that you have people around you 
that can be encouraging too. And it was just like, no, we about to keep stepping because he said. So it was, and so that was another thing. Whereas then I started to see people who say they're who they are Christians. Like not that they say they're Christians, they are Christians, but they just have been in such fear. And it's just like, okay, there's a clear delineation being marked here on who trusts God and who doesn't. And it's not that you don't love God. It's just that your love for him needs to increase because the more you love him comes from spending time with him. But the more you spend time with him, the more you trust him. It all goes together. So whenever I see there are breakdowns in my love for God or my trust for God, I have not been spending enough time with him like I should. And that time comes through studying the word, through prayer, through worship, through all those avenues. I think it's, it's people have this, they've been deceived in thinking just because God said it. That's the end of it. And it is sense like his word is not going to return to him void, but there is an adversary out here. Yes. Like there is, yes. you know what I'm saying? Like there's, just because God said it doesn't mean Satan going not going to try to take it from him. Exactly. Like, exactly. That's a good point. Like he does not have to obey the word of God in the sense that, oh, well, God said, so my hands is off. Like, no, I want to disrupt every promise that you have access to. Exactly. And people just think, oh, well, God said it, I ain't got to do nothing. And it's just like, there's going to be obstacles. But it really goes back to even last year when we spent talk, time talking about perseverance and, dil- and diligence. Then we talked about patience. To me, all of that was leading up to, to then talk about faith because when you're manifesting something, it's not going to be without opposition. Exactly. And if you don't know how to be patient, in the true definition of patience of what we found, yeah. being consistent in action and stuff like that, and perseverance and diligence, being over, being able to overcome adversity and still pursue in the face of it, your faith is worthless. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people are starting to come either to that realization or if they're not coming to the realization, those of us who are learning are coming to the realization by all the examples around. And um, I don't know, I really love the time that we live in. And I, my younger sister, I remember saying that, and she was like, you love the time that we live in? I said, yes, because, not because I love the fact that everybody's dying and this, this, and that. It's because there is a clear delineation being marked in this world. And you're starting to really see who is, who they, are you really who you said you were or were you pretending to be who you said you were? Yeah. It is starting to become so much more clear and so much more evident. Um, and I'm falling on the right side of that. Now, if I was falling on the wrong side of that, I'd be like, dang it, I don't want to see this. But we all got to come to this point where we examine ourselves. And that's what it says in the scriptures. Examine yourselves daily to see if you be in the faith. Are you trusting God? Are you convinced of what his word says? And are you acting on it? That's me examining myself every day, judging that. And it can be even in the smallest of things of God saying, no, I don't do this today. Or no, I don't go here today. Or, you know, do I trust him? And be like, okay, yep, he said it. Even though it's a really small matter, I'm going to obey it. Yeah. So. And Charlene said in the chat, she said, true. I don't know which part to true, but it's all true. <laughs> so it's all like that. But I just think yeah. it's because Christians don't view themselves the way scripture does, where it calls us soldiers for the Lord, where it calls us servants, where Paul talks about the analogy of being an athlete. Like all of these comparisons, yeah. you have to overcome. You have yeah. to train yourself. And in order to pass the test, whether it's an actual test from the Lord or I'm responding in, to the word of God in life is happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it just feels like people are just like, either they just opting out, right? Like whatever happens, happens, I'm done with it. Or they just think, well, if I have to put in any effort, if I have to do anything, and that's a work, what we're talking about with this lesson, and therefore it's not coming from the Lord. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and even like I spoke to someone who was praying about moving out of state, and they said that the Lord told them no, and then they were saying like, uh, well, yeah, I'm going to my pastor to see this, that, third, because, you know, because he was in a relationship, so I guess that the, that relationship was moving or whatever. And I was like, "That what what is there to talk about? Like, there's nothing else. There's nobody yeah. else to talk to or about. Like, he guys, you're not going to done. God's manager. Yeah, like, well, I'm gonna go get a second opinion. Like, we're done. <laughs> and I had to kind of explain. He was saying, "Well, like, he, he getting all this information about moving 
from like different people. I'm like, you have to operate in patience, and that's staying in accordance to what God said, regardless if your pastor said, regardless if your mama, regardless of whatever tribulations, persecution, whatever is happening. God told you something already. He, he already gave you the answer, right. so you have to stay the course yeah. until He give you a, you ask another question or until He tell you something else. That's the course you should, should be staying in. Like, and I had to because we were talking about faith, and I'm like, you can't consider anything else. Like, once He said no, you can't consider it. Like, that's not an option. Like, okay, so what does my life look like in Detroit? Like, that is your only focus because He said no. Yeah. Like, so it was just kind of like. Even people that kind of got it, you still be looking like, yeah, keep keep going, keep going. yeah. You so you talking to him, he talking back, you getting somewhere, but you gotta stay that course, like yeah. you gotta keep going in that vein, and you know seeing that people are not equipped to do that is eye opening because it's now like you were saying in these times, everything is an opportunity, everything every conversation is an opportunity, the plague an opportunity. People dying is option. Like it, yeah. everything is an opportunity because then they have questions or it's for me. I found they they like slander God. I'm sorry, <laughs> Eli in the chat. We are funny. Okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they sl- end up slandering God, and I'm like, hold on, God didn't do that. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, now we got. I got to talk about not because I, I just always God didn't do that. Don't put that on God. Right. Like, hold on. Yeah. You can be mad, you can be sad, you can do whatever. God didn't do that. So, so it's that type of thing. So Charlene said, yeah, living in this day, easy to see what your side on. Mm-hmm. Eli said, if they ain't a fiance, yeah. don't move. I would need, if they I not know. wife or husband, yeah. do not move. Yeah. Fiance is falling go all the time. Yeah. Trust me. Y'all, y'all on Facebook. <laughs> and some of the very people who move wind up moving back. I Absolutely. I just yeah. saw one um, person move back. I know somebody who week. moved here and moved back. Within like a year or two, I'm like, yeah. you dumb. You ain't even married. You moved. Yeah. But she was smart. She didn't sell her house oh. in her other state, oh. so she did have her house to go back to. Mm. All right. Yeah. No, you're right. She didn't. Because no, <laughs> you clearly part of you was like, I shouldn't be doing this. So I'm gonna keep my house. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we good on that definition so far. Okay, so going forward, we looked at a ton of examples of what faith looks like in motion in Hebrews 11. So now we're going to look at a ton of scriptures or a a number of scriptures that say we have to live by faith. So this should make sense, but if not, we'll talk through it. So God repeatedly, and this is the thing, it is in scripture so many times. When I started to see this, I was just like, oh my gosh, like we are... We got stuff to answer for when we stand before him. God repeatedly instructs the just to live by exercising faith, which is conviction or trust in his word to act upon it. So all of these are going to be in New King James that we're going to look at. We're going to start out in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Habakkuk. You said what, chapter? Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Let's see if I got that abbreviation right. Nope. H A B K. H A B K. It ain't taking it? H A K. H A K, let's try H A K. Nope. No, look, Habakkuk ain't in here, now. <laughs> Charlie, how you spell Habakkuk? It's H A B A K. It's a lot of A's and K's. I know there's an H in there somewhere. Something like that. K K? Habakkuk. It's H-A-B-A-K-K. Yeah. It's H-A-B-A-K-K. It's H. She said H-A-B-A-K-K. U-K. K-K. Jesus. There we go. Baby, this is the, we found the one book that ain't got no abbreviation. Rebe- <laughs> Rebecca do. I don't know why that would actually be. like H-A-B or something. All right. So this says in Rebecca 2 and 4, it says, Behold. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, yeah. I'm like, about the Go ahead. Oh, it's okay. H-A-B. Yeah. I know it's H A B. I don't know why this thing is acting temperamental. Because usually when I use H A B, in uh, it comes up. So trying to be difficult. Bible Gateway this morning. Okay, so it says, "Behold, the proud 
His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So as we'll see going into New Testament, the just are people who have been born again. Back in Old Testament, it was the people that were in um, covenant relationship with God the Father. So when you are in covenant relationship, which we are because we have a New Testament, that's a covenant. We are in a covenant relationship with God. We are to be living by our faith. Faith is to have conviction or trust in God to act upon his word. That is the expectation in this covenant for us to live by faith. Okay. Is that justified? That's what that just is? Or is it like, you know how they excuse just fair? Um, I don't know. I will have to look it up. But it is talking in a sense of being righteous. So justified. Yeah, you've been just justified from your sin and stuff like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to Romans chapter 1 and 17. So in Romans 1 and 17, this says, for, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And that's quoting Old Testament, which we just looked at in Habakkuk. So Paul is reiterating, hey, the just, we are to be living by faith. And faith to faith is, again, as I stated, the more time you spend with God, the more you become convinced. The more you trust him, the more you act. Faith to faith, to faith to faith, to faith to faith. The more I learn, the more I trust, the more I act. The more I learn, the more I trust, the more I act. Turn to a rat. <laughs> so, and it's like that. You don't just start out like, I come out the water speaking in tongues. I trust him fully, 1,000%. I'm going to do every single... No, because then life, as Donovan said, Satan is going to come in the mix, start throwing curveballs your way, and you're going to be like, wait, mm, okay, this looks completely contrary, and it's do you trust him? Um, and I'll correct this probably tomorrow. I don't know if I remember. But we were talking about, I think it was Joshua, and the scripture like literally says the Lord was talking to me. He was like, no, I didn't tell Joshua to tell the, the sun and moon to stop. He did it because he needed it to win the battle. And because he's my man down there, because it, it said this was the only time God honored what a human being said. So it wasn't. He trusted like so much like, y'all working for you? We're going to need the sun and moon. So I'm just about to command this. And then the Lord was like, got you. I got you. I got your back. So I, I think that is super duper cool that God was just like, yeah, but it wasn't, again, it wasn't like, you know, I'm having this picnic for my wife and I want the sun, I want the day to be longer. No, this was like a kingdom issue. Like, yo, God, they trying to take your people out. We're not going to win if we don't get more daytime. So I don't know what else to do but command the sun to stay right where it's at so we get more daylight. Um, so, but that, you got to have trust. It just be like, yeah. I'm about to do this. I know this is foolish. But this is about the only option I know. So, like, his trust level. But at that point, he had been a protege of Moses and saw all the stuff that Moses did. It wasn't like he just came, oh, Moses dead, I'm about to take his. No, he had been there and saw all this stuff and stuck with Moses. He was like his right-hand man. So when Moses did fall off the scene, next he was up in line, and it was Kayla and Joshua who when the spies came back, they were like, yo, we well able to go in. Again, his trust level with God had just grown so much. that, And, and God had told Joshua, it was in Joshua 1 and 8, that he said, be courageous, be strong, don't fear. Like God will always tell him, don't fear, Joshua, don't fear. And God would always come through. So the more he had these experiences from faith to faith to faith to faith, it just grew. But if we don't even allow ourselves to trust him to sh so he can show himself to us, then you can't go from faith to faith to faith. You can't always have a backup plan. You can't have a backup plan. That's not faith. As you said this, okay, let me focus like a laser this direction we're going. So, um, and again, that's not always easy. So to be just is to be lawful and righteous. Okay, thank you. 
it I, just seemed like the more like you walk with other people that walk with God, like your windows just open up to it does. the stuff you can do. Like once you said he walked with Moses, he's seen stuff. So he like stopping the sun in his mind might not have been like what it's like to us now. Exactly. He's like, oh, he parted the red. Like, exactly. Like you parted the red sea. You can kick this on up here. <laughs> He's like, and That's I a good point. The two prophets, like um, Elijah and Elisha. Mm. So, like, even th- their relationship, the latter one was able to do more, more. stuff because mm-hmm. he's seen like go. what God was able to do. So, we have to like really, as we walk with each other and stuff, take that into consideration. Like, we know people that's been healed from cancer, so we have to like open our mindset, open our windows to say, God is bigger than this yeah. and keep opening it because if we don't, we're not going to be able to see these miraculous things because we're so focused on our, you know, little faith even though we got somebody to heal every day, all day but we still at home with headaches you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we have to start opening up to start seeing like major diseases healed because we see it in our circle all the yeah. time so we got that's just like a mindset shift for when I heard it no, that's an excellent point. And that's what the testimonies are about. Like, we're going to go around the gamut at, at noon and share how our fast went. The more we hear about, because the experiences you have, maybe I haven't had yet. So that opens and exposes me to, oh, God can move that way. Trey will come and share something, and I'll be like, dang, God can move that way. Okay, let me open my mind to that. And it's right. It's, it's who you hang around. But if I'm hanging around people that's, you know, scared and fear and worry and doubt, guess what? That's what you gonna have more in your life. So and personal example, like Nefertiti praying for a painless birth, like that opened my mind to an option. Like I can pray for that. <laughs> so I went through this already, and I didn't have to. So like as we keep going, you have to literally take what each other are doing and say, okay, this is an option, and this is God's way. So this is what I'm gonna do now, and that can like start opening your repertoire of the abilities of God, like, he's not boxed into certain things, and that kind of, like, blew my mind, like, Yeah. Charlene just said, there comes uh, times in your life when you saturated in faith in God so much that you can't see defeat. Yeah. That, that's awesome. That is awesome. I want to be there every day. That's my goal, is to try to be in that mindset, um, which I'm pressing to get there. Yeah, but it is... That's why you got to just limit the time you spend around people who have small-mindedness when it comes yeah. to God. Because, like, even my mom, who I love to like, like, the other day she said something on the phone that just so annoyed me. Like, I just quoted scripture. Because like, we were talking about the, um, never to use pregnancy and her giving birth. And my mom said something coming from that same mindset of how her birth went. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then, you know, she had to, well, I done went through it twice. Da, da, da. And all I said, I simply said, I was just like, yeah, with man, that's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And then she just started laughing. Because I was just, and she knew I was annoyed. Because I was just like, I, I was about to, I'm about to shut the spirit up right now. And then, and then she was just like, well, you're right. You're right. And I said, yeah, yeah. Man, you should go read that. <laughs> I was so annoyed. I was annoyed. Wait, what did she say again? I'm sorry. I was so focused. Because she was talking about like, um, Neverty was, we were fighting some symptoms. So we were already frustrated because like, Satan was, you know, attacking. And Satan really has been trying to attack a lot. So, like, we are already annoyed, and we're trying to be, so, just for some context, my mom does not have the best relationship with one of my brother, my brother's ex-wife. So, it is limited, and it's not her fault. It's not like she did anything. She bitter, and it just results on everybody involved. So, she doesn't have the best relationship with her um, grandkids in Georgia. So, she didn't see their birth. She didn't get to throw a baby shower. She didn't get to do all this stuff. So, I'm trying my best to keep her involved, to be like, I want you to have a true grandparent experience from start to finish. Like Even with my niece, Kay, who lives in Virginia, there was that first year, that first six months of awkwardness, because she was a mistress baby. So it was like, I don't really do I go to the baby shower, do I not go to the baby shower? Like, so, but it's just stuff like, I was just so annoyed. She was just talking about, like, that's natural, that's this. And I'm just like, your mind is so finite. When it comes to like God. with the pain, yeah. yeah, and I'm just like, we don't like. I'm like, I was about to get out the phone, and the Lord literally just had me say that, like, yep, yeah, with man, you absolutely right. That is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. You should go read that. 
I was just so <laughs> fed up. And I got off the five games and everything. I was like, I'm done. Like, I can't talk to her. Anymore. Yeah, I know. No, it, it becomes frustrating. Yeah. And the only thing that you can do to stay um, decent is to walk away. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. And then that kind of smallens your circle of people that you talk to because you just be like... You ain't even go. You, 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 your mind is not even there. So when you're trying to like express your frustrations or vent, like your mind not there. So you can't even see. Yeah. Like, I know God can do this. So yeah. Yeah. the conversation is going to be fruitless. It is, it is like, now that we've talked about like spiritual blindness, like I see it so much more clearer yeah. now with people. And I'm just like, like it, you can't even, fat, like it's an impossibility to you that the Lord can do this. Like, it's not even like, and I, and I will say, because, like, I know Nefertiri came to me and asked for prayer about that. And naturally, because I'm okay, I'm going to be real, because we, we talk about being real and how does the process work. When she said it, the first thing that hit my mind is like, well, your body's changing. But then I was like, well, what would we need to pray to make the pain stop? Because the pain should be able to go away. And so... Just that quick, I had to readjust my mindset because I'm like, I already know with God all things are possible. So it's like, no, Tremiko, change your mindset. So then as she's talking to me and I'm listening about what she's saying, I'm just like, okay. Because there is a level, though, of, okay, this is going to happen. We can't stop this because now you're going to kill the baby. The baby got to have a room. So what's the balance? So while she's talking to me, I'm hearing God talk to me, and I'm just like, okay, give me the balance between the two, because I also got to have her to see the balance, but then this is possible, so God, you got to show me the balance on your side. So then what he gave me just in that moment as both of them were talking to me is, okay, let's pray for your body to expand properly to make the room so that it's not pressing against the sciatica nerve and all this and that. And so um, just praying, and then from there, just not even going into natural things. I had to shut my mind off from that, thinking logically, and just only think faith, 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 and pray. And so we just started praying, praying, praying. She started getting some movement, and then I think she came back the next day or two and was like, it's all gone. And it was just like, but in that moment, I had a choice to make. Do I go with the natural? Because I'm like, yeah, your body is going to change. Or do I go, but see, here's the thing. Like I say, there's a balance because you can't just go totally left. Be like, yeah, we're going to pray for all the pain to go and blah, 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 blah. But it's like, that's not but her body. There's something wrong here that's causing the pain. So let's find that. And that's not always easy to do. And this could be with anything. It's not always easy to find that. So that's where you need God to come in because he knows all things. And he can be like, this is where you need to focus the command. This is where you need to focus the praying. Um, but yeah, I mean... Just that quick, I realized I was starting to think small, but I'm like, but no, Tremiko, you already know that all things are possible. So that can be rough. And I just want to be real in that situation because that I didn't even know that situation was about to happen upon me. She's just like, hey, Tremiko, can I talk to you about something? And boom, got to be ready. So I'm like, Ugh. And just realizing that <laughs> that process is designed by God. Yeah. So it, I shouldn't be in pain. Like, that's kind of where yeah. my mindset was. This, having a baby is designed by God, and I shouldn't be a parent. Yeah. Like, like, God doesn't every, make design some, mistakes. Like, yeah. Yeah. like, like oh, something is so out cool. of what was, you know what I'm saying? Like, the framework. So, once yeah. I kind of wrap my head around there, when she says stuff about being I'm like, yeah, that's a that's a us thing. Because the design for being pregnant, yes, we have to expand, but it shouldn't be painful. Like, we shouldn't be like... Ooh, I can't even get out the bed today. Like yeah. I don't. That's not how God designed it yeah. to work. So it's like kind of keeping that in the forefront. Maybe make it easier to be like, oh yeah, this is is something working wrong in this situation. Like you said, yeah. now you like something's not right versus yeah. this is just a natural thing that happens. Yeah, like no, this process is perfect, but something in there is not yeah. happening right. You need to get the body to yeah. function different, and that's our domain. So yeah. we have to make it. You know, talk to it to make it do that. Yeah. Right. What, were you next? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know. Right. So, uh, all of the Franklin talking is making me so happy. <laughs> we're just coming into the knowledge. <laughs> but before I came into the knowledge, like, and like officially understood, like, why birth can be painless and stuff like that, it always, like, I will always wonder about, like, why is it painless? Because I knew the scripture how children are a gift 
um, the fruit of the woman's reward. And I'm like, okay, so if you are planting my gift into my abdomen slash uterus, why is it painful? Because any other gift that we receive, whether it be a car, house, blah, 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 it might cause them a little bit of discomfort to grow or whatever, but it's never like, oh, this car hurt. Like, oh my goodness, it's just driving this around hurting my wrist so bad. Like, it's never <laughs> any pain. Like, so I just always just be like, oh my goodness, like, why is it painful? That just does not make sense. So, yeah, it's nothing to think about. Oh, it's a gift. Like, he does not give you any gifts and it, it's painful. So why is this one thing that everybody receives a gift? Pain. And that's where you gotta like really parrot scripture because what got my mindset right was thinking about the lesson when you talked about every good gift that comes from the Lord and you were teaching them, but you were teaching that under the, the Money Matters month that we used to do in March. Yeah. And you were talking about like how people keep going around talking about like this the house, bless, the Lord bless me with this house, the Lord bless me. With, then why are you struggling to pay the mortgage payment yeah. every single month? So, like, walking through that is I came to the same conclusion like, yeah, if this is a gift and this is a blessing. There's something wrong if I'm literally expecting with this gift excruciating pain. <laughs> like there's something off. Exactly. That's good. Good. Good conversation. Okay, so let's look at maybe two more scriptures before we get to sharing our fast experience. Let's go to Galatians chapter three, verse eleven. So again, just notice how many times we've seen two times so far that we need to walk by faith. This says in Galatians 3 and 11, but that no one is justified by the law, the law of Moses, and the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. We keep getting this over and over. Those of us that have been made just from our sins, meaning we have come into covenant relationship with God by coming to him the prescribed way, the expectation from God is that we are going to live by faith. We are going to live being convinced and trusting in what his word says. We are going to put corresponding actions to that, and it will cause substance to the things we hope for in the God of word and evidence to those things we can't see in the word of God. That's how that goes. That's all three definitions of faith or all three scriptures on how it comes, how you exercise it, and what it is together in the statement. And we're still operating at faith. The things that manifest are still faith. The things that manifest come as a result of our faith. Otherwise, it's not going to manifest. So talk that out a little bit more. Because yeah. um, we remember we were saying, when we got to the half faith, we were saying that the thing that I'm hoping for in God's word, when it becomes substance, that's that's the manifestation. No, that. So I think help me if I'm off. So it's components that all work together. Manifestation is one thing, but that's not faith. My faith causes what I want to manifest. My faith is my trust and conviction in God's word to act on it. That's faith. So when the definition says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, my faith, my trust, my conviction in in God is substance to what I'm hoping for, which is the word of God I cannot see. It's immaterial. It's not manifested. So the substance is this definition. Put uh, put up Hebrews 11 and 1. The substance is this definition, the conviction and the trust. Do you remember the conversation I'm talking about? I probably... She's talking about when we were... uh, She used the example of, like, God's chest and pulling... Are you talking about that? Yeah, where we were saying... We were saying that uh, faith is the actual thing that you were hoping for in God's word that you brought substance to. That's wrong. That's, that's why I asked you. Yes. That's what you said a minute ago. Because now I'm trying to figure out where to manifest. What part is in that, in Hebrews 11, what part is faith and what part is the manifestation? Stuff? The things are the manifestation, right? Yes. The su- faith is a substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The things hoped for becomes 
manifest it. That's what the substance is. So faith, so faith is, is the substance. Okay, well, ask your question one more time. I'm sorry. Is I'm processing two at the same time. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm confused. No, you're not. I, I just need to go back and try to remember. Make so sure I'm saying it right. That you manifest in God's word by putting corresponding actions to what he told you. Those things are faith. Because they're the substance of what you were hoping for. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I remember. Okay. I'm trying to go back to what we were talking about and reading a scripture of how it's saying it. Yeah. So, yeah, because the substance of things hoped for would be what was manifested. And this is saying now faith is basically the this. manifestation of what it is that you were hoping for. So, I see what you're saying. So, yeah. And that's why we got to say, you can't say have faith because that's. But the remember, then we fixed it, it that, that we can. It. But that, in that same conversation. Got you. That's okay. Where that came from. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. So what I was saying is when we say substance of things hoped for, that speaks to manifestation. When we speak of the evidence of things not seen, again, that's speaking about manifestation. So if you were to replace that and say faith is the manifestation, then but faith is the manifestation of those things because I'm putting trust and action to it, and it causes that manifestation. So, okay, yeah. and and I'm I'm growing in my understanding of this as okay. even as I teach. So, yeah, um, I can see that of wording it. Yeah. Let me say that wording it properly. So, it would be safe to say faith is the manifestation of the things in God's word that you expect. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, the expect would be the whole part oh, yeah. and manifesting. Yeah. So say that one more time. Say that statement one more time. Faith is the manifestation of the things in God's word that you expect. Yes. Be uh, yes. Okay. It is. I'm sorry, you manifest. Because I heard the word of God and I acted upon it, and that my faith caused it to, to manifest. Right. Does that make sense of confusing people? Yeah, I'm just trying to fit manifest because I don't know. Because it's three things. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. The way we exercise faith is for corresponding actions to the word of God. And when we do that, faith is the manifestation of what, we, what we're hoping for. And the evidence of the intangible things in God's word. Yeah, which is also a manifestation. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Um, this question was last time I was talking about faith too, but... Putting the scripture of uh, Hebrews 1, 11 and 1, and then wherever the one that says faith comes by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. I can't write that down. But um, putting those two together, you can create a sentence that the sentence is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, which is breaking that down. You're saying like what faith is the first part of something. So the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen comes by hearing, and then hearing by the word of God, and then like for the scripture of Romans ten seventeen, it says by the word hearing by the word of God, which means that the word of God you will follow. Like because looking up the definition of by, it is um, pretty much it's like what follows it is like an action that you do. So, say, okay, say the whole thing one more time. The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, I'm with you comes by hearing and then you say hearing by the word of God. Yeah, because the scripture says hearing by the word of God. Uh-huh. No, no, yeah. So, explain, do the explanation again of that. Um, and so, um, definition of by. So, it says identifying the agent performing an action indicating the means of achieving something so when you hear it and then it says by the word of God it means that you need to achieve the word of God so you hear it achieve the word of God achieve by her by do the word of God perform Could, well when it says action would the action be hearing I think that's in that sentence. That's what the action is. It's the hearing, not the acting. 
because nowhere in that, my struggle with that is nowhere in me saying faith comes by hearing the word of God. Do I get out of that, that I'm not going to act on that word? What I get is the action is hearing the word. Because by me hearing is an act. And in order to hear, I have to listen, which yeah. is also an action. Mm -hmm. So you still are missing a piece. Because just by me hearing the word doesn't cause manifestation. Because we know from the, le the lesson on manifestation, there's so much more that goes into that. And that's what a lot of Christians are doing. They're just hearing the word every Sunday, but they got no manifestation in their life. So that, so what you're saying, I will add one more piece. How did you start that again? Hey, uh, the substance of things hoped for. Okay, so the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen comes by hearing the word of God that I will act on. That would be a complete sentence. So does that make sense or no? Yeah. So okay. Okay. So the by is now, now I'm writing none of this down, so somebody better. I know we're recording, but I have a half of it. Good. The by the word of God, the word of God. Is that a grammar thing based on the New King James version? Let me take a look. Super easy to read, Sam. Yep. Like sometimes, sometimes I get Yeah, so they, they just go straight to the point. Faith comes from hearing the word of God. Oh. It's, it's the way they talk with all the bads. Yeah. Because if I was to not talk New King James and I was just talk regular someone, faith comes when you hear the word of God. That's what I would say. But we know when it comes to faith, um, and, and, and I'm open to more, but the three key things God showed me is how does faith come, how do you exercise faith, and what is faith? Those are the three keys that we have to know. And faith comes by hearing the word of God. The way that we exercise faith is through putting corresponding actions in thought, word, and speech. And what faith is, it is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, which is basically faith is the manifestation of God's word that you were expecting. Okay, so let's look at one more scripture so I can finish this slide and then we'll get to our testimonies. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38 in New King James. So, in Hebrews 10 and 38, this says, Now, the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, basically, if anyone draws back from living in faith, God says, his soul will have no pleasure in them. So, when it says, my soul has no pleasure in them, that's God talking about his soul. My soul has no pleasure in any individual who draws backward, who backslides. From living according to faith. So how do I live according to faith? I have to apply trust and um, confidence. Is that what we said? Trust and conviction in God's word to act upon it. And if I draw back from trusting and being convinced in what God says to act on it, he says, I don't have no pleasure in you. Because now go to Hebrews 11 and 6. Because these two go together perfectly. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So in Hebrews 10, 38, God says his soul has no pleasure in someone who draws back from living in faith because without faith, it's impossible to please him. God is the word. So when I give you my word, and you refuse to trust my word and be convinced in my word to act upon my word, I have no pleasure in you. Because you don't even trust the very one you come into seeking advice, seeking help. Why would that please me for you to walk away from the interaction we just had because I am the word and then you go do nothing the word just told you to do? You think I'm going to have pleasure in you and in your life? Absolutely not. And that's what people do every day. The Lord... 
He is so pleased with me, but you ain't doing nothing he said. So is he really? Because he told me he not. So I just choose to believe God's word. He does not have pleasure in you. And when I am drawing back, I got to be real with myself. Tremigo, God is not pleased with you because you're drawing back from living in faith. And those are the tough conversations we have to have with ourselves and not think, you know, God is just so pleased with my life. Now, if you are living according to faith, then he is. And, you know, we are, I think, you know, we're striving and doing very well, but we always know there's areas of our lives that we can improve and work upon. So, you know, that's just the caution. I've seen it happen to a lot of people in Christendom that um, they fall back. Because they got into this place where they think they're high and mighty and walking with God. And now I can just stop living according to the word of God. Now you're on your way to hell. You, you was doing well. But you, you deceived yourself. You allowed Satan to deceive you. And that's the one thing I caution myself on throughout my life. Because I've seen it so much being in ministry. And, I, and again, I, I think being a part of a, a big ministry was a good thing. Because I got exposed to a lot of stuff to warn me not to, to make the same mistakes. But that's typically what happened. They got comfortable. And we should never get comfortable in our walk with God to think that, oh, this is a cakewalk. I don't have to do much. Or, you know, it's, I can, I'm on autopilot. I think that's it. People go on autopilot. There is no autopilot in your relationship with God. It is always a pressing. It is always a striving. And when you find yourself on autopilot, you've now set the destination to hell. And that's the best way I can put that. Okay. Anything else? What would people like me to put it down so good at going? Not hard. Like, no, I got you. Like, it's like, ooh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> or like when we talk to people like at the um, at C4, and we, you know, they say kind of like they, you know, making it into heaven. Yeah. Or like they following the word of God. It'd be like. God, you said you would not be begging for bread. Girl, I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if not to like the church higher up, but like just people in general, like they miss it. Cause I'm like, he said his seat won't be begging. You out here, so you must not be doing. Like, this is a telltale sign that you is not doing what God said. Absolutely. And you have to like, you know, talk them through. Like, okay, well, what? What criteria are you using? Exactly. And then they be like, you know, I just I'm good. No. Like, I'm a good person. Yep, I'm a good person. What does that mean? Like that's yeah. not a thing. I don't kill. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so people like far to say what is making it is not the word of God. Yeah. And I see that's why a lot of people just kind of yeah. God's pleased with me because they're not using the right criteria. Exactly. Because if you use I don't kill, I don't steal, we all, yeah. you know, make we everybody all. in there. Yeah. For the most part. But when you start looking at the criteria that God got, versus, yeah. well, now it's like, dang, I don't do that. I don't do That's this. Very I, different. I don't have that. I don't, you know. So that changes. And before we get into one more thing, um, just to piggyback off that, and then we'll get to you, and then we'll get into the testimonies. Um, we had a really good experience. I was with Donovan, and he approached a guy, the guy that was in the Navy shirt. And he said, um, you know, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven or hell? And he said confidently, heaven. And then Donovan was like, oh, okay. And um, you, you basically asked, I forgot how, like, what is God judging on if you get into heaven? And then with just as much confidence, he was just like, I don't know. Well, how you know you going? I'm just like. Are you are you serious right now? You don't know the criteria, but you know you going. I was like, uh, Radesh, that just threw me back. I'm like, well, then you don't know if you going. <laughs> what are talking about? Um, people that use the wrong metrics to say if they make it in, the they say I'm a good person. I don't kill. I don't steal. Oh yeah. So I was going to say that if they were using them those metrics, then that means people who have killed before never would chance. never ever have a chance and they have a chance still so yeah that's all oh gotcha yeah. okay but yeah just that's the that's the, the literally that is the blissfulness of ignorance because you don't know yeah you i'm you right i'm going to heaven how you gonna get there what's i don't know but i know i'm going 
Yeah. I was just like, wow. Like, I would want to be sure if I... And that's what I asked him. That's, that was my next, because I was like, oh, I like that confidence. Yeah, I, like, I know. Because he was confident. And I was like, he, we asked, you know, how do you know? I don't know. I was like, well, do you know? I was like, well, the answer is in scripture. Do you know it? And then, it was, no. Would you, would you want me to tell you? Yeah. Then we walked through scripture. Hmm. Because <laughs> then that reality starts to sit like, whoa, I do that. I do that. No, I don't want to hear it because my answer is. Yeah. yeah. No, right. And I will say. The one thing that um, God said to me, um, I think this was the other day, and then I'm going to say goodbye on this, stop it, um, is that while we're going out having really good conversations with people, and one thing he was saying is don't, don't think that what we're doing is not productive because he says what we're causing people to do once they walk away from us and we're there frequently it's causing people to think about their final destination, which is what they have not been thinking about. They've just been living day to day, and we're forcing them to think about where am I going when I die, which was not even a thought process that they were contemplating or considering. Um, and as we see the more and more we come, the demons that are there are really starting to get agitated because they're like, oh, y'all, y'all going to keep coming back. <laughs> So, um, also realize that too, that eventually at some point deliverance might break out or something because the demons are starting to get agitated that we're not going anywhere. But, um, just know that don't feel like what we're doing is in vain because that is one thing that he said to me is that people are being forced to consider their future and that's something that they need to do. So, um, with that, um, uh, we're going to quote, huh? Oh, that, okay. Um, and. I brought up the scripture when he sent people out into the towns they were like talking to people and doing stuff with the people and then they left so yeah. in our modern day you know we have to attack the groups of people as if we came to the town ministered Jesus and then move on to the next set of people Yeah. so that kind of just popped up as far as scripture no it's good cool all right, so we are going to conclude class um, today for this portion. And, um, yeah, so we'll end right here for the recording and see you guys next time.